How do you feel when you see someone who you haven't seen for a long, long time? They're walking up to you, you're giving them a big hug. You just can't believe it. Uh, you're so excited to touch base on all that has happened and just to, be, just to be happy that this person you have missed is back with you. One wonders exactly what was going through the minds of the disciples on Easter Sunday night. Now, there were a lot of doubts and confusion and is this really Jesus and all of that, but the fact is they must have been thrilled in the end to know that Jesus truly was alive. They thought he was gone, even though the Lord had told them that he would suffer and die and then on the third day rise again. But you know how it can be where you know what God's word says and yet it is still very easy to have questions and to doubt and, well, the disciples lived all of that. So now they're having conversation and as the doubts are swirling and Jesus is working very hard to assure them that he's really alive and it's really him and he eats food to show them that he is flesh and blood. Like, what do you talk about at a reunion? A joyful reunion of that sort. You know what Jesus talks about? He just moves right on into the future. They were not going to dwell forever in this moment on, wow, he really is alive. Now, that surely was the driving force for their lives. Yes, for the rest of their lives. But, but Jesus moves them right along to what the scriptures had to say about the future. Yes, the scriptures said that he would die. The scriptures said that he would rise. But the scriptures then said that repentance would be preached the forgiveness of sins to all nations. In other words, there was a job to do. That's what Jesus focused on on Easter Sunday night. The marching orders. And it wasn't much later when Jesus with, was with his disciples in Galilee. Words that perhaps you are familiar with. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Yeah, Jesus was getting closer to his ultimate departure date. And what is he talking to his disciples about? Marching orders. Here, here is your focus from here on out. And then when finally the day came when Jesus ascended into heaven, this is precisely what Jesus talked about on that day as well. What their mission was, what their job was. Yes, there was a joy-filled reunion, but there was a future to play out. A future that included you. Included you, first of all, because it's only because the disciples did what Jesus asked them to do that we've come to know about our Savior, that a repentance, a mind change has taken over your head. You've got a different attitude toward behavior that goes contrary to the will of God. You hate that. You, you know that God does have standards, that we will meet him on the last day, and that the determination of whether what we did was right or not is not going to be how we feel right now or what makes us feel good. It's what was God's perfect will for life. So this mind change all of a sudden makes me afraid when I understand that I have done or said or thought something that is contrary to God's plan. I, I properly would be punished forever for that. But there's something more to the mind change that the Holy Spirit has worked in in your heart, that you look at Jesus differently. He's not just a name from the past that you know people talk about. You know that Jesus, when he did die, was carrying your sins and that because he suffered eternal hell there's none left for you you're 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 innocent you're forgiven and Jesus rose to give you absolute confidence that that is all true so your mind has been changed and it happened because disciples were faithful to the command that the Lord had given them now the Lord is not appearing to us on Easter Sunday night, but the command that he gave to his disciples is precisely yours. As one has lived the life of Jesus from the announcement of his upcoming birth to his birth and baptism and preaching and Palm Sunday and suffering and death and resurrection and 
than ascension as that life has played out before our eyes. It's not just an opportunity to reflect on the past. The marching orders that Jesus has for us are precisely the same. The ones he repeated multiple times as he was about to leave his dear friends. You, you are one who proclaims a mind change, the, the sending away of other people's sins. You get to talk to your coworker or your family member or your child or your spouse about the love the Lord has for them, that their head may be in a different place right now. But it's important for them to know that there are things that make them ashamed and they know it. And there's a reason they're afraid of death just naturally. And, and we confess those sins to the Lord, knowing we deserve something horrific. But then you're proclaiming that mind change of total joy, that Jesus on the cross did die for the sins of the world, including the sins of your coworker or your friend or your spouse or your children. Wow, and that sets you free forever. That gives you the anticipated joy in resurrection that you rise not to eternal death, but in Jesus, you rise to eternal life. Do you have something to do with the rest of your life? Absolutely. Jesus' goodbye was not merely reflection. It was looking forward, looking forward to your future of living now, marching orders, to pass along the amazing life of Jesus that more minds, just like yours was, might be changed.